I'm Jago Cooper, and as an archaeologist who specializes in South America, I've always been fascinated by the secrets and mysteries buried deep in these awe-inspiring and forbidding landscapes. The history of this continent has been dominated by the stories of the Inca and the Spanish conquistadors. But in this series, I'll be exploring an older, forgotten past. Traveling from the coast to the clouds in search of ancient civilizations as significant and impressive as anywhere else on Earth. I love coming to South America. There's so much rich, unstudied archaeology here. Everybody's heard of the Inca, but they're just a few hundred years of 12,000 years of history of this great continent. There's so much more to study. And by looking at these lost cultures, we can help them take their rightful place in the history of South America. One can only imagine what the first Europeans must have thought when, parched and dazzled by the desert, they came over the hill and saw this. This is Chan Chan, one of the largest adobe settlements in the world, a monument to the 35,000 people who once lived here. The Spanish recorded a Chimu story about how their ancestors sailed down the coast from lands further north. You see the pelican a lot in many of the friezes in Chan Chan and at Chimu sites. It's an iconic bird for the Chimu, and they were used in the fishing because it helped the Chimu identify where the shoals of fish would be when they were out to sea. For the kings and queens of Chan Chan, canals and irrigation channels like these played a crucial role in the expansion and consolidation of their empire. It was their ability to mobilize and control the skilled workforce necessary to construct them that transformed the amount of agricultural land available. Human sacrifice is an incredibly emotive thing. There's no getting away from the fact that brutally murdering 43 children, ripping out their hearts, opening up their chests, it's a hard thing for us to understand. But as an archaeologist, we have to try and empathise with how this can be culturally acceptable at the time, perhaps even expected of the elites who ruled Chan Chan. This is the spondylus shell, which lives further up the coast in the warmer, deeper waters off modern-day Ecuador. For the Chimu, this little shell was highly prized as a status symbol. In 2010, this late middle-aged woman was excavated, and alongside her body was found all of her grave goods. Lovely Chimu ceramics, beautiful copper metal objects, but most valuable of all, clutched in her right hand, is a spondylus shell. These shells there was no safety equipment in the Chimu. They had to free dive down to the sea floor, pluck them off the bottom, and they represent the most valuable item within the Chimu culture. Around 1463, uniformed Inca soldiers descended from the mountains to meet the Chimu. Not even this powerful empire could withstand the Inca for long. By 1470, the last king of Chimor was defeated and exiled to the victor's capital of Cusco. A society that embodied hierarchy for 450 years was suddenly without a ruler. With nobody in control, the Chimu were lost. Today, Chan Chan enjoys the status and protection it deserves. In 1986, it was made a World Heritage Site, and it's taken its rightful place in the pantheon of Peru's great cultures. The palaces, friezes, and fragile adobe structures are being protected and displayed. And it's a testament to the builders of this amazing city that 500 years after the last King of Chimor was exiled by the Inca, the corridors, plazas, and palaces of Chan Chan still inspire such awe.